When we discuss the greatness of a player, it can't just be about how many trophies did he win, how many titles did he accrue over his career. That's a very, very simplistic way of even grading great players, and it's not a particularly effective metric for really trying to decide who is greater and in what sense. We need to lay out our criteria and then balance it against each other, then look at the context of that criteria in its era, and then objectively against all of history and against each other. So... These are topics when we talk about greatness and the greatness of players where obviously we want to put in a lot of time and have discussion and uncover a lot of points and then build together and model different ways of thinking about these players. It's not something that a simple sentence is going to come along and solve or put in some kind of meaningful place. And yet that is exactly what most people seem to get hung up on is not having the discussion of how great this player is or how he was great and in what way and how we grade greatness. Instead, they want to just say, right, well, this guy won this title or this many titles or this most important, most prestigious title. Therefore, he's better than this person who didn't or who won less or who never won this title, for example. Now, that's not only a very base kind of logic and not a particularly meaningful or effective kind of logic, but it in the end just boils things down to an arbitrary scale of oh if you have five titles that's better than four titles but why is five titles better than four titles are they the same titles what era are they in who are you playing against how did you play in these you see there's all this context that as soon as you start to pile it in makes that actually quite a meaningless statement and yet what's funny is you go across not just esports any sport i mean you go into any sport okay so when kobe bryant won his fifth nba championship or lebron now won his third etc people will always ask this question right is he a greater basketball player player person they're talking about than michael jordan and the first thing people go to is michael jordan won six championships they won five and three now what's funny is a lot of people just stop the discussion out ah, no need to continue that discussion as though i mean people actually used to say this about kobe Bryant, right well once he has six then we can start the discussion well then no it's entirely ridiculous isn't it like the notion that he has six is not why michael jordan is the greatest player of all time michael jordan could have five championships and he would still be the greatest player of all time because every other factor would still be there he could have lost the last two games of the 98 finals to this to the jazz and lost that final and he'd still be the greatest player of all time because it's more than just the titles it's everything else about his career that's what greatness is now having a fantastic tournament is one thing Having a whole career of greatness is not just what happened in a final when you played there. Because when you just make it one number higher than another, no qualitative judgment is taking place. No analysis is is present within your arguments. So greatness is many things. I mean, beyond titles, sure, titles is one aspect of it. That's one aspect. You can say that's the first part since people are going to start top down, right? You can start with titles and you can look how many titles does someone have. But beyond titles, how many finals does someone have? How I mean, think about this. I'll give you some examples. So, Clan Mystic, the French team that had Kiyoshima and it had uh, Kaylee and it had Apex in it, won ESWC 2013 and beat Very Games, who was the best team in the world at the time, in the final there. Yet, Clan Mystic is not better than the team that also, by the way, had Apex in, the Kenny S Titan of early 2015, which could make finals and semifinals, but couldn't win a big title. It wasn't better than that team, and yet Clan Mystic won a big title. How can this be? Because the context is what makes that the case. Who were they playing? In what era? And what what sort of maps were they playing? How competitive was it? How did the teams actually play? Was there a mismatch at certain points in time? These are all the questions you have to ask that then reveal the context of how important that title is and how important the legacy of that title is. And more than that, again, not just t- f- titles, but numbers of finals. So another reason why titles alone don't mean anything. Casey and Sink. Do you know who these players are in Brood War? A lot of Brood War players wouldn't even necessarily know. If they did, they wouldn't be able to tell you much about them. These are two Terran players who won the OSL, the on-game net Star League, the most prestigious competition in South Korean Brood War in the 2000s. Yet Bisu never won the OSL. He never even made an OSL final. Yet Bisu is considered a significantly greater player than Sink and Casey. Now, first of all, yeah, Bisu won other titles, MSLs, etc. But looking at their whole careers, their careers don't even vaguely match up to Bisu's beyond even just the title aspect. Every other aspect they are completely deficient in, and therefore he is a much greater player. So not only what titles did he win and how, but what, how many finals did he make? 
How many semi-finals did he make? That's making it deep in the tournament. Okay, maybe you face the winner this time, so you only make the semi. But if you're making that a lot, that's a great kind of record. That's a great kind of number to have back there and to look at again to judge. How many times do you make it to the quarterfinals or beyond? The round of eight into a playoff bracket, etc. Because those sorts of things, finals, semis, round of eights, when you've accrued a lot of them and when we're comparing a lot against each other, even though that itself, those are each going to need their own context and then be compared collectively and the eras, etc., even so, we're already getting towards more data. We're getting towards more opportunities to show greatness on a regular basis. And these things can't be fluked in the same way that one-off wins like Clan Mystic ESWC 2013 and CSGO can. The difference is, amazingly, you actually can have a fluke where you win a tournament in a way that you can't have a fluke, where you're not going to make the finals of five tournaments as a fluke. That's not going to happen. That's no longer a fluke. You're not a bad team at that point in time, or you're not a lesser team. You're a very good team, and in fact, you can win none of those finals, and you can be a better team than the team that won the one final. It's pretty obvious when you think about it in that particular sense, because those things take consistency. They take repeated excellence. Sure, you could even be excellent that one-off time, but if you couldn't repeat it, you weren't truly excellent. You were once excellent and the average is that you're just a decent or a good team so they take consistency they take repeated excellence they take great plays sure winning one off title might take great plays they take lots of great plays they take the ability to adapt and to evolve your game so that you can keep returning back to these deep stages of terms and continue to win the games you need to to get to that point in time and prove that you're great then you've got to add in as i've been doing already who did you play it's not just about how far you went but who did you play to get there did you face hard competition in the context of your peers, because if so, that's very meaningful. Did you face hard competition in the context of history? All-time great players in your way, number one players in your way. The harder your draw is, the more meaningful your accomplishment is, the deeper you go, and eventually if you win the championship. How did you play within the context of your accomplishment? Did you play and narrowly edge out all the series and win the tournament? Did you play and dominate series? Did you come back into series? How did you compete in the losses within series? So, okay, you can have a 3-2 to two series where you only had a chance, really, in the three games you won. You got smashed in the other two. Or do you have a 3-2 to two series where every game you're in it and it's incredible and the level you're playing at is super, super high? What about the brilliance of what you actually do? Not necessarily just in terms of flashy plays or aggressive or decisive or great out plays, but the brilliance in terms of like the fundamentals and how consistently you play and how you consistently get back into games and how you play intelligently and the small decision making. I mean, to give you a few examples, the reason why all this is important is because when you then come to judge people's careers, it's going to put you in a position to make much more interesting judgments, much more reasonable judgments. Because if you look at just titles, then someone like JW far outstrips Kenny S. Two Orpers, two famous Orpers. Kenny S can't come close to JW in terms of number of titles. But you know what? When you look at excellence rather than just titles, greatness rather than just titles, now all of a sudden you find Kenny S is the greater player. And for, for basically every reason other than titles. I mean, first of all, he has more... He has, he's the primary carry, JW, a secondary carry, sometimes the third best player, sometimes the fourth best player in these titles. Sure, in terms of round of eights, first of all, actually, Kenny S, in terms of round of eights and semis, has a lot as well. He has a massive amount, and you'll notice they close right in together when you start to look at that sort of thing. He's on lesser teams at times, had less opportunities at times, against some of the best teams of all time, against some of the best scenarios. Another, probably one of the most interesting ones that people never seem to do is I actually think an area where this was criminal is in StarCraft 2. People used to use this logic all the time for the Nanawa versus Stefano debate. The logic was since Stefano had won a number of titles and he had, then he it was no even debate over who was better, him or Nanawa. And yet once you start to look beyond titles at finals and semis and top eights, then now they compete on other continents and versus Koreans and which opponents they played and in what matters and the length of how long they competed and how long they were very good for. Suddenly it closed right down and the number of titles alone wasn't deciding it. And now you can make a case for each of them in their own particular respect. Now you might still come to the conclusion that Stefano's the best. Same as you're going to conclude probably that Michael Jordan's better than LeBron or Kobe Bryant. But the point is, it's not as simple and, as, and it's not deciding decided by that one factor of this number's higher than that number. There's more there to judge. And so whenever you're thinking about greatness, it's a topic that demands, that, that requires, that deserves more thought than just a simple one-liner or some very simplistic logic of this number's higher than that number. And so just as for greatness, we want to enjoy these people's careers and figure out what made them so fantastic and celebrate it. So when we're discussing the topic, we want to open it up more and really get into the nitty gritty and the detail because these are fantastic discussions to have. These are some of the best to have in sports, in esports, in competitive disciplines, and so greatness isn't just the number of titles that a person won. It's how they won.